Hey everybody, my name is Carlos Slaap, watchmaker in the Netherlands. And maybe you've seen the live stream about the beautiful masterpiece. We've been just working on this particular watch. Beautiful on the inside and on the outside. Um, I didn't finish the disassembly because I wasn't 100% sure how to remove the cannon pinion. But when in doubt, coffee, stroopwafel. And the answer comes by itself. Mm. There was already a suggestion uh, in the chat. Uh, I'll show you to remove the beautiful uh, chaton, the ruby. Uh, even kijken. There we go. So in a moment you'll be watching with me. That is the camera. And now you're watching with me to the watch we're working on. Uh, there was already a suggestion to remove this screwed on chaton. And I removed it to see, uh, well, to gain a bit more space about the pivot. I didn't want to remove the bridge because if it didn't fit it would move like that in the ruby and the ruby will break and this is an exceptional pocket watch such high quality um, I don't want to jeopardize the quality of the restoration in any way the thing is there is the cannon pinion and it <laughs> you see how dirty the the pocket watch is it's horrible but lovely quality uh, the cannon pinion doesn't work in the same way as a modern wristwatch because this pin in here is the same as that one it's a bit of a spike going through the hollow um, pivot of the center wheel. It will make sense in a moment, <laughs> I promise. So I have to push it out. If I try to get my levers underneath here, then I'll damage the leaves. Really don't want to do that. And here, these are two separate parts. So what I'm going to do uh, with the Horia tool. I found a support which is hollow and which perfectly fits there because I want to support the this metal bit and not the um, yellowy. Uh, brass bit of the center wheel so it has to be there and with this one I've got a perfect fit there to support the center wheel and then from the top I'm going to push with this blind insert of the Horia tool and then we slowly push out uh, the pin is the theory <laughs> well it isn't the first time we do uh, a pocket watch from this era but every single time there are so many different solutions to the same problem it's always well tricky well yet you just have to be extremely careful and but as everything in watchmaking so the hollow insert down there, the blind insert from the top, and it's a screw down function, and hopefully we have enough height.
Yeah, we do. There's the oh. There's the support. Visible. Even the cannon pinion is slightly pushed upwards, so I'm really supporting exactly what I want to support. Oh. There we are. Maybe it's visible. The, yeah, the cannon pinion is supported. We are very happy with that result and now we see from the back the pin sticking out. Do you see that? I'll show you under the microscope. It can be so tricky, oh, and this beautiful timepiece from, I think, pre-1900, so we have to be very careful. And here we push the pin down outwards, so now with a nice lever. Not forcing anything, but the oh, look at that, it's filed down. You see that? Well, we file, we make it flat again, but this is the most important thing that the pin is in one piece and even you see that two notches there that are the production marks and now we have there the center wheel let's finish at this one Now we can remove the bridge. tip tweezers to remove this bridge not to make any scratches there we are maybe it's still intact now I'm going to remove this one and we have to be very careful because it's got an elongated pivot because of the second hand decentralized second hand and in a moment we'll have a look at the bottom of the cannon pinion because that is interesting
again the same production marks everywhere it is a lovely piece such high quality and now in the production order that is stuck let's have a look at the pivots Those are in good condition, so it was old lubrication that uh, made it stuck. There the center wheel, well we've supported it underneath here, so not a single mark. Very happy with that result. This wheel we have to lift exactly straight because it's got a very long pivot where the second hand is attached <laughs> we really have to clean that one but pivots are in good condition so now finally the main plate but let's have a look at the cannon pinion. It's filed down. Do you see that? It is concave. And in all the beautiful quality of this watch that is the cinder one we have to polish and make uh, nice again um, i promise updates of um, the restoration of this you know, beautiful timepiece exceptional timepiece it is really really nice um, i promise updates i am really um, glad with the result that the cannon pinion and the gear train is disassembled and if you missed the disassembly the, the, the live stream I just want to show you this this is the pallet fork well I'm a self-confessed pallet fork fetishist this is an exceptional one because the rubies are visible from the side instead of from the top but and this is the what the thing i want to show you here are the rubies ruby is one of the hardest materials in the world encapsulated by the metal the steel well, let's see if i can find a eyelash yeah. because this is this shows the exceptional craftsmanship how this watch is made yeah there is the eyelash I have to use an eyelash because but look at this there is no space that's the ruby I still have to clean it but still that is my eyelash and you see there is absolutely no space in between 
the ruby, the jewel, and the metal. That is insane craftsmanship. Not even a filler with a uh, shellac, for example. If you're interested in this, we have um, a video about how a, a watch works. And if you're not really uh, well aware of the beauty of horology, well, please have a look. Um, this is exceptional, beautiful stuff. Uh, <laughs> that's the update. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. Um, at the end of this video, I'll put a link to uh, how a watch works. And maybe we, if you're interested, please have a look. My name is Colin Slaap, watchmaker from the Netherlands. Hope to see you soon. See ya. Bye-bye.